In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this charcuterie board out of solid maple. And I also screwed it up, so you'll get to see how I handle mistakes. This is Dave Remade. Making a charcuterie board seems very simple when you kind of think about it, and you can make it any size or shape that you like. Just do a Google search, and you'll see online that there's many different weird ones and things like that. It just depends on your preference and how many people this is intended to serve. This one here is just for my wife and I, so just two people. Originally, I was going to make it a little bit larger, but as you'll see in this video, I made a mistake. There was a little bit of live edge on here, and I wanted to kind of show that I, well, you'll see, I messed up and cut a little too much off, so I had to improvise. This one's a short, simple one, and it's really good for any kind of beginning woodworker. It just allowed me to use different tools, and I think that's a good project just for improving and working on your woodworking skills. Let's get into the video. For this charcuterie board, I'm using four quarter maple or one inch thick maple. I had some lumber left over from gifts that I made over the holidays, and this board was pretty flat, but I decided to run through the planer just to get it even flatter and kind of take down the thickness a little bit for the board that I was gonna make. In order to trace the shape of the handle out, I'm using a couple items that I had in my shop for reference. So I'm using my Japanese pole saw for the handle, and then I'm using my O'Keefe's working hands here to trace the rounded end of the handle itself. And for the rest of the shape, I just kind of sketched it out roughly and then cut it out on my bandsaw. I'm not cutting directly on the line, I'm cutting a little bit outside because I'm going to kind of shape in the rest of this using sanding. Now I was pretty happy with the shape that I was starting to get at and I wanted to keep this rough live, I think it's a live edge, but I wanted to sand it down because it was splintering off. However, that ended up being a mistake and I shredded my sanding disc here. However, I would soon learn that would not be the only mistake I would end up making during this build. Now, for some unknown reason, I decided to take this over to the bandsaw to take a very close pass, and I ended up cutting off the entire rough edge that I wanted to display. So now I had to go into creative mode and figure out what kind of shape I wanted to incorporate into this board, factoring in the error I just made. So as you can see here, I kind of came up with this meat cleaver blade type of angle on the end, and I really think it looks sharp, no pun intended. Now after cutting out all the curves and angles with my bandsaw, it left behind some pretty rough edges that required a tool I did not own in my shop yet. After waiting patiently for a few days for my new tool to arrive, I got back to working in the shop. And right here I'm just cutting off the last round over. Here is my new tool. It's an oscillating spindle sander. And this thing was epic in this part of the project. It made sanding down the corners and the wonky angles on this board extremely easy. And they came out nice and smooth and I was able to sand right up to the original line of the curves. The next thing I was going to do was put a hole in the handle so I could take a leather string and tie it through there so I could hang it up in my kitchen and display nicely. I'm using my drill press here and using a Forstner bit to go through the handle. Um, but if you look closely, you'll notice that I made another mistake and it's not exactly center, but no one's gonna know. Well, I'll know. And now it's on to my second favorite part, routing. 
I'm using a round over bit to go over all the edges and this really makes this board look nice and smooth and turn it from its original form with hard edges to something that I would really like to display in my kitchen. Now it's finally time to go to one of my least favorite things and that is sanding. So I'm using my random orbital sander to sand everything down and I just kind of go through the grits and I am using water to do what's called raising the grain. That way when I first wash it, I'm not gonna get that fuzzy feeling. And then after raising the grain, letting it dry, I sand everything by hand with some very fine grit sandpaper. And this took a lot of time, but the results speak for themselves. Now it's on to my favorite part, and that is putting the finish on the board. I'm using walrus oil, cutting board oil, and this stuff is fantastic. It's food safe, and it almost feels inappropriate putting it on, but I really enjoy this finish on the board. It really warms up the maple, and it lets that grain show through, and it just feels really good once it dries, and it protects the wood. So this stuff is awesome and I highly recommend using it for cutting boards or charcuterie boards that you're gonna put food on. I hope you got something out of this video and for me working on this project and messing up made me realize that it's your design it's your creation so unless you're making it for a client um, that's a different story but if you're making something for yourself learn to adjust learn to adapt to whatever you're working on learn from your mistakes I think that ultimately makes you a better woodworker or creator in any aspect of what you do you just gotta Take a deep breath and continue to work through it. So this is the first video for my channel in 2021. And just to kind of give you an idea, I'm looking to post at least one video per month. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but when you have kids and a full-time job and you have to do all your woodworking at night and on the weekends, it takes a while to not only make the project, learn the tools that I'm using if I'm using them for the first time, but also editing and, and videoing it. I would say that making a video on a project takes probably twice as long, maybe not three times as long as it normally would if you were not videoing. And being someone who has a background in videography, I'm very particular about my camera shots, my angle, and, and all that stuff, and lighting. And it's probably not a really good thing for productivity sake, but thanks for the support. Thanks for subscribing. Please share this channel, share my videos if you'd like. If you don't want to, that's cool. I'm not gonna make you. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves. I don't really have a good sign off yet, so sorry if it's awkward. I'll, I'll figure it out. Hopefully this year I'll figure it out.